What you guys got another video here for you. Stop check your ISO file before installing anything on your PC. Now, if you go directly to Microsoft's website or any other website that is the source of that ISO file, they should give you the hash value number for that particular file. This means it's coming from the source of this particular download here. This is Microsoft, and we know that the file should be legit. And it's important because when you're downloading any type of ISO file off the internet, the hash file should match to the original that you are using. If it doesn't, then it's been tampered with and it can be uh, you know, dangerous to install that on your PC. We've just downloaded Windows 11 English International here and we can now verify our download file. On their website, they will give you the hash code which is the long code here for that particular file if we look right here english international 64 bit it gives us this long number now this is where it's important to check the sha265 output that matches the value of the table below so if i went and downloaded an iso file from another source which isn't the original source which is microsoft and that hash file is not the same then you are installing a file which hasn't been verified with its integrity against a good known value from the source which is microsoft so why should you care where you get your isos from well you should care you should compare the two values if the checksum matches your file is identical to the original and it's safe in terms of corruption or modification it means that if you've downloaded a ISO file from a unknown source, that file could have been modified. It could have had a malware injected into there. Now, also, it doesn't matter whether it's a Linux ISO file. They will also share you uh, their hash numbers right here. You can see, come right down. You can see SHA265 checksum numbers right here. And you can verify these. Uh, with ones that you may have downloaded off the internet. Now, they do need to match, obviously, otherwise it's untrustworthy. Now, Microsoft used to list all of the hash codes for all of their ISO files. For some reason, they're not doing that anymore. Uh, but it's also important that for people that are on Windows 10, that are going on the internet and downloading ISO files from other sources, which aren't Microsoft, You've got to be careful because if the hash code has been changed, that means it's been modified or it could be uh, corrupt. And of course, if you are installing this on your main PC, it's important that this all matches up. It says here, if the SH256 output matches the value in the below table, the product that you've downloaded, this confirms that the file has not been corrupt, tampered with, or even altered from the original ISO that was downloaded from Microsoft originally and it says it right here now we can check this and I'll show you how you can do it by checking it inside PowerShell now why is this so important well like I said before if you are downloading ISO files from third-party sites which are old ISOs you need to make sure the hash code is exactly the same as the original when it first downloaded so if we look on Microsoft's website here it tells us about algorithms and it tells us about uh, get dash file hash and all this sort of stuff and i'll show you in simple terms on how to quickly do a check on a file to make sure the hash code is exactly the same as the source we're going to use the actual source file that we just downloaded from microsoft's website now if you're downloading it from another source which isn't microsoft's website then you need to make sure if they display the hash code, you need to check that with the original hash code, which was released by Microsoft. If it's been changed or altered, it will be different. And that way, you know, it's not an original file. So we've got the file downloaded. And what we're going to do is we're going to type PowerShell inside the search box here, just like so. We can run this as normal. We don't have to run it as administrator. Type get dash file hash just like so and now what we need to do is put in our path mine is in my downloads directory so i'm going to do c colon backslash users and then backslash 
my username. In this case, it's Brightech. So let's go ahead and do that. Then backslash, then downloads, because that is where the ISO file is located. So now we can do another backslash and we can put in the file name, which is our ISO name. Now, I already know what the ISO name is. I don't need to type it all out. I can just put W and then push the tab key and it will find that file name. And you can see it's found it right there. And basically, we now have our ISO file in the downloads folder right here. So what we want to do next is we're going to do space dash A. And this is for the algorithm. You can type algorithm out if you want to. That's just a shortcut. Then do space SHA256. And that is the algorithm we're going to be using because that's what was on Microsoft's website. And now we can push enter and this will pull up the hash for that particular ISO file. And it should tell us what it is on the screen shortly. It's just doing a, a scan of the file and it will then show it on the screen. And there we go. So now we have algorithm that is SHA256 hash and that is the hash number and then we have the path where the file is located so what you need to do now is compare this to the original uh, so this is the original hash for that file so you can reference the hash file number on microsoft's website and that's it right here now i can already see that it's the same number but how would you tell because it's such a long number here well, we can use PowerShell to uh, compare the two files. And I'll show you how to do that right here. So what we can do here is you can use your up arrow key on your keyboard. Those are your cursor keys, arrow keys on, the, on your keyboard. Push the up arrow key, and this will bring up the previous command that we just typed out. So that's it right there. Now, we need to make a couple of edits to this. So use your arrow key, the left arrow key, to go back to the beginning because we need to put in a curved bracket on the front and go right away to the end where it says SHA256 uh, on the end right here. We need to basically put a curved bracket on the end right there, like so. And it should look something like that. Now we need to put in our command on the end of it, and that is going to be dot hash and then space dash eq and that is equals and now what we need to do is get the original hash number from that file which is on microsoft's website it should be on every website so what we're going to do here is we're going to copy the original which i copied from microsoft's website like so and again this will be on any website that you've downloaded the iso from and now what you need to do is close that off with a couple of inverted commas there. And then we're going to just basically push enter. And what it's going to do is check against the original uh, that we have. Now we know it's going to say true because it is the same because we know it is. But this is how you can quickly check to see whether it's the same as the original. So you can see it says true here. So let's just assume that you downloaded an ISO file from an unknown source and you know the original hash number for that file, which was listed on Microsoft's website somewhere. You may have to use Wayback Machine or something like that to get the original hash file number and you can cross-reference that to make sure that it's been untouched. Now, if I do the up arrow key one more time and make one little change here on the digit right here, so we're going to do it again, and it should give us a false uh, reading this time because we've changed that hash code. And this is how you can quickly tell whether the ISO file has been modified or been tampered with in any shape or form. You can see it says false now, so we now know they're not an equal match and it's been tampered with. And of course, you would not use this on your PC. So let's just break it down. If you're downloading a Windows 10 LTSE or Windows 10 IoT LTSE ISO from an internet source that isn't Microsoft because they don't offer download links for those, it's important that you understand what the original hash code was for that file. 
and that version that you are downloading. And then what you need to do is get the one you've downloaded and cross-reference it with the original source, which was what Microsoft released at the time of releasing that ISO file. If you know what they are and they match, then you know it's untampered with and it hasn't been modified in any way, shape or form. If they differ and there's not the same hash code, then obviously don't use that ISO file because it could have been modified. Same thing goes for any type of Windows ISO file or any Linux ISO file. Wherever you download them, make sure that they are all matching. Hence why I don't recommend people use, you know, custom uh, Windows ISO files that have been uploaded onto the internet where they've been modified because the hash code will be different from the original and you have no clue on what that person has done to that particular file. And these commands support MD5 and SHA512 and a bunch of other ones that you can see on the screen here. So that's what you need to do to check your ISO files to make sure they are legit ISO files and they haven't been tampered with or modified in any way, shape or form. A lot of people don't understand how dangerous this is. If you are using a ISO file from an unknown source, make sure that you check the hash code for it yourself. Don't take other people's word for it. Do it yourself. It takes a little bit of time. And as long as you have the original hash code, as long as you have the ASH file number from the original source of that ISO for when it was released, you can then cross-reference it with the ISO that you have just downloaded. And if they differ in any way, shape or form, then do not use those ISO files because it has been modified and it might be corrupt either. So you just got to be super careful on what you're doing and what you're installing on your PC because at the end of the day, you might not know that there's a backdoor being added in there and a bit of code's been changed and next thing you know, uh, you're using your PC and someone is remoting in from the back end and you wouldn't know any different because you think it's an original ISO file from an original source when really you've downloaded it from a third party uh, source, which is not good. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.